Today we're here at Auckland University. I thought it'd be a great chance to go through some of the things that I would do if I was just starting out in the field. So I've either just graduated or just about to graduate and getting that first engineering job. So what would I focus on? My name's Brendan, your structural engineer. Now let's get into it. You know you may have heard this, but really take it to heart. Once you've finished university, you haven't actually stopped your study, you've only really just begun. They've only really taught you the basics of what you need to know and some of the basic mechanics of engineering and not what actually goes into engineering design. So there's quite a wide variety of stuff that you need to focus on in engineering design. How does it go together? How can you construct it? Instead of just doing the numbers to making sure that you've got the right size and stress. So there's a big difference between analysis and design. See, in design, you're making sure that it can actually be built with constraints that are given to you. Do you have site constraints? Do you have construction constraints? Can they put certain things in certain locations? And there are there better ways to do it. Sometimes you may need to increase the size of things to make it easier to build. And learning from those things takes time. Where at university, they've only really taught you how to analyze the beams, what reinforcement you need in it, where the stress is going and the flow of forces. When you're starting out, there's always that need to go, what is the software that I should be using? How should I be analyzing it? What software should I be looking at to make this easier? This is really the wrong decision, especially early on in your career. You want to be able to understand the basic mechanics of the engineering behind it. So the numbers that are involved and why the stresses occur in the structure instead of what software I need to analyze it as you need some way of justifying the results out of that computer. That age old debate again about garbage in and garbage out. If you don't know roughly what the answer should be, there should be no need for you to jump into that engineering software. So I'll be starting to focus on the basic principles of engineering. Why stresses flow through structures? Which way stresses will flow through the structure? How do I analyze that by hand? How can I do basic rules of thumb and principles like that? So rules of thumb are really helpful to help you size up the structure to make sure you've analyzed it correctly. Sometimes you may have had the wrong units in the software analysis that you're doing. And just basic principles like WL squared and 8 to calculate the moments in those critical locations and assess it back against the results that you're getting. Now, that's not to say that you shouldn't learn the softwares, as you should, but this will come with time. As soon as you know those basic principles, you can start to move into the software. Now, as an engineer, it's not a 9 to 5 job, unfortunately. There's so much we need to know, so there's quite a lot of learning, and sometimes you'll do a little bit of learning on the job, which means that you potentially will need to do a little bit more outside education. So you're potentially working a little bit overtime to come up with the time that you've actually spent on the job learning. And now that on the job learning isn't necessarily structured. You may be just using the software to make sure you know how to use it. As the efficiency in the software comes with time and use. So you may be taking time out of your day to use that software, learn how to use it, either before work or after work. Another thing, you shouldn't even just be focusing just on those hard skills of engineering. Yes, they're important as you need to be able to analyze the structure and work out what the results are. But your soft skills are just, if not more important. As you think what an engineer does is not just the numbers. Yes, you need to get to the right answer, but it's displaying that information to someone that doesn't have the same engineering knowledge as you. So your communication skills are highly important. So whether that be your written, verbal, or schematic drawings, you need to make sure that you're helping increase those. And if you're looking to progress your career fastest, your communication skills come more and more important as you progress. As a lot of engineers can actually do the numbers, make the right results, but if they can't communicate it effectively, those engineering skills are really a waste. So as an engineer, arguably your most important skill is those soft skills. So while you're focusing on the hard skills, it's also looking at improving your technical writing skills, making sure that you're focusing on the right audience, knowing the difference between passive and active voices. By the way, you always want to be speaking in that active voice. It makes it shorter, more concise, and people are more likely to understand it. And also thinking about what knowledge does the people have and what are the problems that they are needing to address. So trying to phrase your problems in a problem that they can understand and how you're addressing their issues. At some point in your career, you're also going to have that feeling that you don't know anything. This, this is a good thing, not a bad thing. As you have a realization of how much you need to know. And what you've got to realize, everyone started from basics as well. So they've been where you've been. Now, when you get to this point, it's about pushing through, keeping those studies up, but also asking the right questions. Now, when you're asking those questions, just don't come there expecting solutions, but come there with a potential solution of what you think the answer should be. So you're going through, I think it should be this way. Now, it doesn't really matter whether that answer is correct or not. You've had a thought about it and tried to solve the problem. And you've come to them with a solution so they can talk through why you would do something a certain way. If you just come to people looking for solutions without trying to solve it first, you'll never learn if you never know what the right answer is or whether you actually know the knowledge or not. Where 
that will make you more dependent on the person you're asking for solutions than being self-dependent is where you want to be coming. The only question that's a bad one is the one you don't ask. And just because they have a better way doesn't make you a bad engineer. They've been doing it for longer than you and potentially seen different things that you haven't seen. So they may have seen this multiple times and say you've got to do it this way for certain reasons. As an engineer, there's also a wide variety of structures that you need to cope with. So whether it be residential, commercial, train stations, infrastructure, or even like the Spark Stadium behind us. Each of them have the unique properties that you need to look at to design. And it's up to you to keep track of what type of jobs you've worked on, what type of designs have you done? Have you done concrete? Have you done steel? It's not up to someone else to do it, because up to this point, someone's going to keep a track making sure you're doing the right courses, working on the right things. But once you go into the career, no one's looking out for that. It's up to you to take control of your career. So working out what you need to work on, what you enjoy working on, that's not something your manager can do. And making sure you're focusing on those areas and making sure you're getting the broad range of experience on different types of structures and different construction methodologies. It's up to you to take control of your career and then someone else. This is really a big change from where you've been before through schooling and university. So it's something you need to consider and making sure that you're guiding your career down the path that you want to go, as there's so many different pathways. When you're looking at getting that first job, it's always key. You want to try and get that tier one company, but that's not necessarily always the best position. And some of the smaller companies will offer you a more variety of engineering from start to finish, starting up your own projects, where in bigger companies, you may be stuck on a big project where you only have to design one element. So when you're starting out, if you can't get that tier one company, looking at those tier two, tier three, and tier four companies, where you can have more of a family environment, get involved with talking to clients earlier, get involved with quoting projects, and even running your own projects. It's quite a lot of good experiences you can get when you're first starting out in a small company. See, that's where I started out, and that's where I cut my teeth as an engineer and got that broad range of experience from start to finish from little projects. The one thing I've noticed when stepping up to those bigger projects though, the little projects are just as hard, if not harder than those bigger projects. So there's really no benefit in stepping into that big company if you don't have that variety of work anyway. Everyone's looking to chase that money, especially early on, so they may be jumping careers a lot earlier. But when you're first starting out, money is not everything. It's more the experience and getting your teeth into the engineering work. So if you're learning, it's very valuable to you. So you want to make sure that if you are learning at that company, that not just considering the paycheck, it may be low, but they're teaching you, they're educating you, they're bringing you up to that next level and they're giving you the experience that you may need to step up to the next role, either within that company or in another company. So making sure you're valuing the experience you're getting. And if you ever do stop learning, either reaching out to them to try and get a better position so you can get that more range of experience that you're looking for, or maybe you do need to start looking for that next role, but just don't do it for money. Career development for pay is one thing and you wanna making sure you're striving for that more money as it does help you out in the long run. However, you should separate that from career development. You see, career development is about how you're progressing your career, what things you should be focusing on. And quite often when you bring it into money, although it is somewhat related, you can get quite confused. So making sure you're having separate discussions about your pay and about your career development and where you wanna see your career going. And not everything you do, you're going to enjoy. Just because you're working doesn't mean you do enjoy everything you're doing. Though you do need to enjoy some part of your work, but there's always stuff that you need to do that is monotonous and boring and you don't find interesting. Sometimes the grunt work is where you can learn the most. They're so doing that repetition and sometimes it just clicks. You know, you link up this with this and you have a better understanding. So don't shy away from that grunt work and don't be afraid if you don't enjoy everything you're doing. But there are parts of it, especially when you build those big buildings. Revel in the excitement of seeing something go up that you've designed. Saying that you're involved with that and you're key to making sure that it was put together. Whether that be a big building or a small building, still something you should have pride in. As engineers, we affect many people day in, day out. Whether it's the houses they live in and enjoy, whether it's the infrastructure that they use, or whether it's the buildings they live in, much like this hotel. It needed an engineers or multiple engineers involved to make sure it come together, whether it be mechanical, electrical, structural. Everything needs to come together to make sure that building is functional and is safe to live in. Engineering is not a sprint race, it's a marathon. And sometimes it can feel like you're moving very slowly in your career. But when you look back at something you've done a year ago, two years ago, you realize that how much you've actually progressed. It's really slowly, slowly. It's like the turtle always wins. In the end, you will find sometimes you'll have those major leaps as you're jumping up through your career and some of the things that you get to do. And when you look back on it, it's really quite exciting. You see, engineering can either make you travel interstate, like I've traveled a lot interstate through my role as an engineer, 
But even now, people are moving nationally and internationally. If you want to work in different countries or different areas, engineering will give you that ability. And if you're interested in supporting the channel further, we've got links to my Patreon in the below description. Much like these many members here, without their support or the support of my YouTube members, this type of content would not be possible. And as always, stay safe, keep learning, and I'll see you next week. Bye.